If something went wrong with the clock, I knew Tara would be blamed for it. So I decided to make sure something did go wrong. Tara deserved to get into trouble for the hundreds of terrible things she did to me. So what if just one she gets blamed for something she didn't do? I thought, it's only evening the score a little. That night, after everybody was asleep, I sneaked downstairs to the den. It was almost midnight. I crept up to the clock and waited. One minute to go. 30 seconds. 10 seconds. 6. 5. 4. 3. 2. 1. The gong sounded. Cuckoo! Cuckoo! The yellow bird popped out. I grabbed it amid cuckoo. It made short strangling noises. I twisted its head around so it faced backwards. It looked really funny that way. It finished out its 12 cuckoos facing the wrong way. I laughed to myself. When dad saw it, he'll go ballistic. The cuckoo slid back into its little window, still facing backwards. Finally, Tara would know what it feels like to be blamed for something you didn't do. I crept back upstairs. Not a sound. No one saw me. I fell asleep that night a happy guy. There's nothing like revenge. Greetings internet, and welcome to Bookworms Goosebumps Retrospective. Today, we turn back time with number 28, The Cuckoo Clock of Doom. Michael has had it with his little sister Tara, always finding ways to get him in trouble with his family and laughed at by his friends. To do that, he turns the head of a cuckoo bird from the clock his father just bought. But Michael soon realizes that time is moving backwards. And if he doesn't fix it, he will soon disappear. The cover is good, but misleading in terms of what you think the terror is. I think my issue with it is the bird. It looks too real, like it's alive, and will torture Michael with some crazy cuckoo clock bird plan. But it disappears for most of the story. It's most likely I just let my imagination go. When I saw this cover as a kid, I made up my own story over what the book actually told. Keep your eye on the birdie! Speaking of the story, this is one of the most interesting books in the series. First off, I have to say, Tara is one of the worst human beings I have ever read. I'm serious. With the first five chapters, we are just shown how much she makes Michael's life a living hell. Yeah, a lot of us have had baby siblings to deal with, including me. But I'm sure most of us will agree, this isn't a little sister. It's a demon. And the book makes it seem she's been like this ever since she was born. The scares in the book are pretty good too. When Michael must relive some of his worst moments in his life and know he can't stop. At one point, he mentions his body feels like a robot moving on a predestined path. Add the fact that you know you will disappear and you have some great moments of fear. But Michael is one of the dumbest characters. Seriously. He realizes while he's 12 that it's the bird's head that is causing the problem. But it's not at home since when he first realizes it, his dad didn't buy it yet. But then he doesn't remember where it is till he is in second grade. I literally smacked my head when he remembers his dad went to the store with the clock for the last 15 years. How do you forget something like that? But there is one thing that saves it. And that's the twist at the end. I won't ruin it for you, but it leads to one of the most interesting ideas about how much one person can affect your life. This is a decent book. It drags a lot in the middle, but makes up with one of the most interesting twists the series has to offer, and one I would say you should take a read just to fully emerge yourself with it. What about you, internet? What's your opinion? Till next time, have a scary day.